So you want to be a paleontologist. Today I'm going to talk about three things that you can do to help you become one. I'm Miria Perez and I am a paleontologist, a fossil preparator to be exact, and I spend my 9 to 5 job working on fossils that are millions of years old. I often get asked, how do you become a paleontologist? What can I do? My kid loves dinosaurs. How do I encourage them to pursue their passion? And today I'm going to be talking about the three big pieces of advice I would give to anybody interested in our ancient world. My three biggest pieces of advice are number one, find a local museum to volunteer at. Two, find a mentor. This doesn't have to be a paleontologist, but somebody who can see your potential and push you towards great things. And then number three is to follow paleontology on social media. Let's talk about the first piece of advice, volunteering. I would advise anybody to volunteer or do an internship in something that they enjoy. This is a great way to see if you even like the subject or maybe pick out the things that you don't like or like about a job. Volunteering at a science museum or natural history museum is a perfect place for you to start your path in paleontology. In fact, that's where I started out and many of my colleagues who work in the paleontology field. With volunteering, you're able to learn the skills that is necessary to be a paleontologist. For instance, I learned all of my fossil prep skills, how to clean fossils, at the museum, at my Houston Museum of Natural Science, where I grew up. And you're able to sometimes go on excavations where you learn how to dig up fossils, which is very exciting. And even how to do science communication, which is just talking to museum visitors and sharing your passion of science with others. The second piece of advice is find a mentor. A mentor is somebody who sees what you're good at, what your weaknesses are, and they push you in the direction where you can become the best person you can be. This doesn't have to be a paleontologist, it can be anybody. Um, throughout my career and my journey in paleontology, I've had many amazing mentors that have encouraged me and kept me in paleontology to this day, and I owe them a huge thanks. But these people are so important because paleontology is a very small field. There's not too many of us roaming around looking at fossils and being in museums and universities. So finding a mentor in paleontology is, is great. Another thing about mentors is that they will show you opportunities you would never dream of. For instance, I would have never been able to prep fossils or help come up with ideas for an exhibit at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History if it wasn't for my mentor at SNU where I went to school. So definitely find a mentor. I think mentor and volunteering is at the top of the three. I can't decide which one is more important. They're both very important. And the third piece of advice is to follow paleontology on social media. Now, this might seem a little odd, but especially during the pandemic where you might not be able to go volunteer at a museum or find a mentor in person, following people on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, all of that good stuff is great for you to start networking. If you're interested in becoming a paleontologist in this path, it's good to know who your peers are. And this is a wonderful opportunity also to see what kinds of paleontologists are out there because we're not all doing the same thing. There are many different kinds of paleontologists, fossil preparators, what I do, but many other people spend their time researching paleobotany, which is plants, or studying fossil tracks, or things like theropods, a very specific group of dinosaurs. What you can do is follow different hashtags such as Hashtag paleontology, hashtag fossils, hashtag dinosaurs. These hashtags will bring up content that is related to the things that you want to follow and you want to be in touch with. Another thing too is uh, following, if you go follow paleontologists, see who those paleontologists are following. Who are they getting their information from as well? Once you start getting the hang of social media, you're able to keep in the loop and see and sometimes see fossil discoveries as they're happening. Following these social media accounts actually gives you insight to what real paleontologists are doing. 
and you're already taking the initiative by watching this video. And the reason I have these three pieces of advice are because these are the three things that have helped me the most personally on my journey into paleontology. To give you a little bit of background of how I got into being a fossil preparator, I started out as a junior volunteer at the Houston Museum of Natural Science when I was 12, and I found mentors in the curators there, where I learned how to fossil prep, excavate, and talk to the public like I mentioned before. There I got my skills and I started to have a feel of what paleontology was like in real life as a job. And then I started cold emailing professors at different universities to find out what universities also had fossil labs and who might be a potential mentor at a university. I found a mentor at my university while I was getting my geology and anthropology degrees, along with working in the fossil lab. And now I spend my time behind a visible prep lab in Dallas, Texas, where I work on the bones of a dinosaur called Pachyrhinosaurus peroorum. I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned. Subscribe if you want to learn more. Feel free to comment or email me any of your questions. I hope to see you next time.